Look at the baby. Oh my goodness. She's like, I want to come on the ride. Oh. <laughs> okay. Here we go. I'm here at the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center with Sierra and Maya to help Sarah out with a member of the reindeer herd. And no matter how often we come here, playing with the reindeer never gets old. La, la, la. Don't tell mommy. Come here. <laughs> the reindeer at AWCC are very friendly. Um, oftentimes, I think they're my spirit animals. When they see the food truck, they come running. They're certainly into treats. Oh, Chuckles. Look at him. Chucky Finn, are you getting lovin'? <laughs> <laughs> He's so sweet. Ladies man. No. Chuckles is the big guy in there. He's our old grandpa guy. Uh, he's in retirement now at this point. Oh, my goodness, buddy. You are closing your eyeball. <laughs> I love Chuckles a lot. And if you have food or bring scratches, he loves you just as much back. <laughs> this is the greatest day of my life. Can we do this every day? Hey, Chuck. And then Mom walks up, and he's like, nope, he's having none of that. What's this big scar thing here? Feel your lymph nodes. Hold on, just let me check. So, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> it's like they went from lovely scratches to I'm looking for something. To vet pets. Not in an exam room. I don't even know how to pet a dog anymore. <laughs> so feeling for everything. Okie dokie, guys. Now that we've had our chuckles with chuckles, it's time to turn our attention to another member of the reindeer herd, Julius. That's Julius. Oh, man. Poor love. We're going to give Julius a look. Uh, Julius is a three-year-old steer. He's coming out of winter into the summer right now, and everybody's gotten some good weight on him. They've recovered from the winter, but Julius didn't come out so well. You can see his ribs and stuff. I don't know what's going on with him. As I'm looking at Julius across the enclosure, I, I'm really concerned. He looks extremely thin. Like, I can see all of his vertebrae. I can see the hip bones. And he wasn't looking like that a few months ago. If you look at everybody else, everybody everybody's else nice is and big, and then there he is. Yeah, right. We're not sure why he's dropping weight so quickly, because everyone in the pen is getting lots of good food. They've had a deworming regimen, which we do every spring. Now that we're kind of early summer, he should look chunky like everybody else. So we know something's not right with him. OK, well, um, we might try to put our portoscope in and have a look at his stomach. I don't know that we'll see anything. But we'll okay. see how that goes. Just just because we've had issues with these guys, you know, if garbage gets dropped by visitors and it blows in the pan, these guys will eat it. So yeah, they're, like there's a cookie monster. These guys are the garbage monsters. Yeah, I know. All right, cool. I'm gonna check our portoscope first and make sure it's ready to roll. Come on. So for Julius, I'm gonna sedate him because I need to put a scope in and try and look at his esophagus and kind of look down into his stomach. All right. I'm suspicious about garbage being in his stomach or the room in. And the reason for that is that ravens will fly over the pens in this area. They'll get garbage that's dropped by visitors or anywhere in this area. Come on. And they tend to drop it in the large enclosures. OK. It popped out, and I saw a little bit of drug, but he probably got enough. Now, for most of the animals, they just ignore it. But for whatever reason, reindeer are garbage hounds. Keep feeling it. So when I have an animal that's doing poorly, I want to try and look to see if I can actually see the garbage with the scope. He's down. He's down. How are you? Let me get a blindfold on you. OK. This, as you can see, this little beauty, this is like just basically a camera. So, like, if I put it here, I can see my own ear. There's a little screen here. If I put it up my own nose. Ooh. Anyway, this is just a really nice way to look down his esophagus. And I'm going to try and look in his room. And I'll, I may not see everything that I need to see in there, but I'll at least get a look. So this is kind of a speculum that I go through so he doesn't chew on my camera. OK. That's freaking cool. I know. Well, that's his tonsils. So do you see that? Watch when he breathes. <gasps> <sighs> so you see to the left, right here, that's yeah. actually his trachea. I'm OK, try advancing a bit slowly. As I'm looking down at Julius' esophagus, I just see normal musculature, normal esophageal lining. Now I'm in his big, gnarly rumen. Ooh, what is that? Ooh, he's got a big, do you see that? Oh. So that's right just about into his rumen. And it's got like fiber oh, and yeah. stuff to it. So that's like an ulcer. Oh, man. I should not be there. 
Basically, an ulcer is, it's like an erosion in the stomach lining. But how that got there, I don't know. So now we're in his room and just looking for what's not supposed to be there. Any garbage or any, what is that? Oh, that's just a little bit of plant material. Well, I'll get in there a little further and now you're gonna see nothing but green probably, but I'll have a look. This thing is so cool. I'm definitely not seeing plastic, but the thing is, is that plastic can be buried in um, rumen contents, you know? Okay, I'm gonna reverse them. When I have an animal that's doing poorly and I see an ulcer, there's probably something bigger going on here. Basically, the point of no return now is to go in surgically, open up his rumen, and see if I find garbage. Oh, man. Poor love. We're trying to help you. I'm going to come back tomorrow, and we're going to sedate him. You know, even though the surgery is going to be hard on him, without it, I feel like he's going to die. <laughs> Today, Michelle heads to the reindeer farm in Palmer, Alaska, where visitors commune with 120 domesticated caribou. I have my favorites, and they all have names. Denise Hardy cares for this happy herd. Thank you. But today, one of her top bulls is feeling low. We have Dr. Oakley here today to see Buster. Hi, Denise. Hi. How's it going? Great. So Buster was our main breed bull last fall and I was really excited to have lots of babies from him. And that's when we found devastating news. We think that he got in a fight with another bull during the breeding time, and so it looks like another bull kind of poked underneath him with his antlers and ripped oh. open his testicle. Oh! It was actually outside of the sack and swollen, doubled the size of the other testicle. And there was infection already present at that moment. We had to do an emergency castration to save his life. The surgery ended Buster's career as a breeder bull last fall. Now with Summer, he's fallen ill again. We've had been finding infection off and on. We just don't know what's going on. The swelling is coming back again, and um, he's limping pretty bad. I think he's been getting more and more in pain, which uh, is why we're okay. so glad you're here. Buster doesn't look well at all. The area around his scrotum and between his legs is quite swollen and looks kind of fluidy. So all signs point to a chronic infection. So what I think we need to do to kind of get at the root of the problem is like fully mobilize him, do a bit of an exploration down there and try and find where it, it's coming from. Okay, all right. This poor guy, of all places to have an injury, what a spot. In the eight months since Buster's castration, Infection may have spread to other parts of his body. I'm going to try to move him around and then out. But before Michelle can determine the extent of his illness, he must be herded into a squeeze chute for handling. You cannot lean against this because it will end badly for you if you do. There it goes. Uh uh, Buster. Reindeer can be unpredictable, especially when they're not feeling good. We have to stay in control, because he could kick someone or trample someone, and then it's game over. Hoi. Heads up. Coming at you, boss. The team must close the pads around the 350-pound animal uh, 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 uh. the exact moment he runs in. Yeah, this is going to be good. Three, two, one. Hold it back. There you go. There you go. OK. With Buster unable to kick or flee, get a muscle. Michelle safely administers the sedative. OK, you can let me go. OK, let's go ahead and release. All right. Hang on. Right, you got the... Heads up. Heads up, go. Ryan. Hey, 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 hey. There we go. We're good. Okay. The bull should go down in a matter of minutes. Once that adrenaline gets out of their system, they just go down. as Michelle and her team stabilize Buster. So we're just getting an IV set up. They discover one of his vitals is already in the red. Temperature is 39.6. He's really heating up here. So with a temperature of 39.6, I mean, that's 103 degrees, 104 degrees Fahrenheit. He's already getting at the upper limit of what I want to see. This isn't good. It's 39.7. He can't control his own body temperature right now. He starts to overheat, proteins start to break down, things start to fry, and basically his brain will start to cook. 
Michelle needs to stem his fever by any means necessary. Yeah, so pour some water right here on him. We're using the fluids to cool him down as well. 39.2. That's so much better. With Buster finally cooled off, Michelle turns her attention to his swollen belly. Oof. I'm worried about what that is exactly. As soon as I touch his belly, I'm worried. I can feel a lot of fluid and a lot of swelling. The worst case scenario is if this is actually an abdominal infection, an infection inside his belly that's maybe tracked all the way in up into his organs, and we could be talking about complete organ failure. I, it's, it kind of feels like it's his whole belly. Hmm. To help gauge how far the fluid spread. So I'm just gonna see if I can get some fluid out. Michelle performs an abdominal tap. I'm gonna put a needle right into the abdomen and see if there is any fluid coming out. If I get fluid back, then I can have a better idea of if there's an abdominal infection. We can actually culture it and see what type of bacteria it is and make sure we get the right antibiotic to treat it. I'm not getting anything out. But as I'm putting it in and I get it right into the abdomen, no fluid comes out. The question is, where is all that fluid? Around there. To find out, Michelle must cut Buster open. Perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and explore it a bit to see um, what is up in there. Uh-oh. Oh, this God. tissue is brutal so thick. As I'm getting into the area, I'm finding this kind of big, thickened area of cellulitis in the skin. It's just not very healthy tissue. That tissue is a clue that a powerful infection may be lingering deeper inside. It keeps going kind of in there. Ooh, that doesn't look good. Uh-oh. This tissue is brutal thick. Michelle is trying to find the root cause behind Buster's escalating pain and swollen belly. Ooh, look at that. As she opens a channel inside, she hits pay dirt. This goes in super deep right off the bat. A deep pocket filled with pus, a clear sign of infection. And this is a fairly good sized cavity. It has two different tracks going off in two different directions. It's really starting to flow now. There's a lot of pus draining out. We want to get as much of that out as we possibly can. Now we're getting some goo. And I'm just kind of continuing to put the flush in there and allowing it to drain. I've flushed a ton, like probably, you know, two cups worth of pus come out of there. I'm just what I'm trying to do is get far enough up that I can open it up so I can put a drain in there. Now I'm going to go in with tubing that I'll actually suture inside so it stays there, but it'll follow the track of the abscess and hang out of the body. Now we're getting somewhere. And that's what's going to keep allowing things that are high up inside under the skin to follow the path of that tube right to the outside of the body and drain. We'll remove it in either a few days or in a week. Okay. A shot of heavy-duty antibiotics will cover Buster for good measure, but that's no guarantee he'll kick this infection. I'm not sure what the prognosis is for Buster. The problem is it's a chronic infection, and that's really, really tough to treat and get rid of. It's just hard to say if he'll be able to fight it off. It felt like he just moved. Just tell me if you feel him pulling against he you, okay? He's getting um, a little light. Okay. We're just finishing up. He's starting to move his tongue a little bit, kind of twitch his nostrils, so I know he's getting ready to wake up. Gently roll him up now as gently as possible. I just don't want him to take off on us. All right, I'm going to give him the reversal. OK, I think we can let him up, so. OK, clear? Yep. Let's just let him up. Back away, please. Easy buster. Pretty good up. Yeah. So for the next few days, Denise is just going to keep a close eye on Buster. It's going to be just making sure that he's eating and comfortable until I come back to check him. Well, at least we got some of the pus out of there, yeah. so. Buster is a huge part of our herd and our family, even as a castrated male. Hopefully, we can cure him of this for final this time. Now that Buster's out of commission as a breeder, Denise has chosen another bull to become the next daddy in the herd. Hi, Walt. Hey, sweet boy. The next case I have for Michelle is Walt. He's a nice young male that's halter trained. I intend for him to be the breed bull this fall because of his fantastic personality. But Walt recently suffered a mysterious injury that has Denise worried he may not feel well enough for breeding. 
He has a blue eye. Ooh, okay. Walt's eye turned from brown to blue within a few days. I'm not sure what's going on with that. I think it, feel, it feels like he's blind, like oh, when we okay. kind of go at it, so it's okay. concerning. It's scary because we don't know what caused it. I actually have seen eyes swell up out of the eye socket and have to be removed. So that's a huge concern. We'll get set up. When you suddenly have um, an animal that develops kind of a bluish looking eye, that usually means there's been some injury to the cornea, to the surface of the eye. Hey, buddy. The old blue eye. It's OK. I need to find out what the injury is and how bad it is. I mean, it could be caused by a foreign body. Um, it could be an infection that's transmitted by flies, or it could even be like an internal infection that's pushing the eye out. Here comes Walt. Breeding season begins in less than two months. If Walt's not feeling better soon, Come on, Walt. it could threaten his chances to become Denise's next stud bull. Aw. Oh, that eye sore, is it, huh? Oh, love. Let's have a look at that. Laying down, is that OK yeah. with you? He's going down. Right when I go to examine Walt, he just lays right down. He's just not feeling well, and you can tell he's really uncomfortable. I know. It's tender, isn't it? It's a little tricky to kind of get in there, not get an antler in the forehead. You got it? Oopsie. The good news is, is that he's definitely able to see me. I can see that he's reacting to my movements, and he still has some vision in that eye. Oops, oops, oops. Hold on, buddy. Hold on, Walt. The bucking bull's in agony. So I'm going to put some drops in that'll, so that I won't be tender. It basically freezes it. Let's see if I can have a look at this. I know, you don't want it to open the eye to the sun. The bright light is not only causing pain for Walt, it's also causing problems for Michelle. Let's bring the tarp, and we're going to have to huddle underneath. He's in the squeeze out in the open. The sun's out. It's really tough to actually do a proper exam of an eye like that. So we're actually going to cover him up, just get a little bit of shade. Perfect. You're OK. I'm really sorry, Walt. Now that I'm under the tarp, I'm just trying to get a view from all angles and light up the parts of the eye that I need to see. So you can see all those red vessels. You need to look up at us. Don't look down. And it's pretty tough to see through all that, that kind of blue. It's just that the corneal surface is no longer clear like it should be. That blue film is basically an infiltration of cells trying to fight infection. And there's a lot of swelling. There's a lot of fluid. And because of all that, it's really tough to get all the way in there to see. But Michelle is able to catch tiny glimpses into the deeper part of the eye. I don't see any sign of a foreign body, but it looks like there was a poke. Something poked in the eye, either Almost scratch or poke. And when I look at the center of the eye, I see a very clear kind of slash in the surface of the cornea. So he had some type of injury to his eye. It's like probably some type of puncture, a piece of wire, or something like that. It really just looks like it's on the surface. A surface injury is good news but it still needs rigorous treatment to combat infection from setting in. Now, if this was a dog at home and, you know, we could give him drops three times a day, great. But that's not going to be the case with a reindeer. But what we're going to do is I'm going to put some antibiotics actually in the conjunctiva, like the underside of his eyelid, and it'll slowly leak out onto his eye. And that's one way to avoid kind of giving eye drops every day. Administering antibiotics to a reindeer's eyelid is not for the faint of heart. There was a small needle, like a red one. I basically have to put a needle into the tissues around his eye. Hi, Mac. Now, he's going to have to stay still. I want to stick a needle actually in his eye, and I need to put it here in this eyelid. What I just need to do is, you know, keep that needle pointed at a safe angle. I don't want to poke him in the eye, so I have to be careful and just keep everything kind of smooth and controlled in case he were to jump. Nope, don't move. Oh, I don't like sharp objects coming to my eye. Can you imagine a reindeer seeing that coming and not understanding what's happening? Oh, and we're going to blab it in there. Well, the eye could deflate if it gets popped by a needle on accident. I, I trust her that she's going to be able to do this without stabbing him in the eyeball. Oh, hang on. It kind of jams up because it's really thick stuff. Okay, we'll get the rest of it, buddy. Woo! It's really hard to inject with a small needle. Walt the reindeer has a gash on his eyeball. So... 
To treat it, Michelle must inject an antibiotic straight into his eyelid. This treatment is pretty rough. I don't envy my little Walt to have to go through this. Go. The injection must be administered painstakingly slow. Kind of jams up because it's really thick stuff. Okay, we'll get the rest of it, buddy. Penicillin is just a really thick, viscous liquid, and I'm trying to inject it through a small needle so it doesn't hurt. Woo, watch hey. yourself. Oh, but because it's so thick, it's taking a long time to get out. Let's see if I can get any more in there. What a good rain here. That's a pretty good blub, I think. We're good. The full dose is finally in. All right, buddy. There you go. One last injection should keep Walt's discomfort at bay. That was for pain and swelling. Oh, you won't like that, I'm sorry. Woo, watch yourself. In a couple days, I'm hoping to see a lot less of those red, angry vessels around his eye, and definitely a resolution of some of the blue eye. Oh, I'll be back in a few days, and we'll recheck and see if we've got any progress. OK. When Michelle returns, Denise will find out if Walt stands a chance at recovery so he can father the next generation of reindeer babies. We really got to get Walt back out there feeling good and doing his job. This morning, Operation Reindeer continues at the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center. You guys can just stay back unless we need to come in. Okay. Okay. Michelle is concerned Julius the reindeer. You see that? May have ingested garbage. Oh man, I should not be there. I'm pretty concerned about Julius. But unfortunately, we've had reindeer that have passed and we found garbage in their stomach. I've got it. Alrighty. Did it inject? Yeah. Good. With what he's showing me, based on his body condition, considering the rest of his cohorts are in really good shape, I hope Dr. Oakley finds something in there just to explain what's going on. Oh, he's going down in the corner there. Oh, he's down. Julius looks nice and sedate, so we're going to come in with our little reindeer mover, put him in that bag, and then get him into the clinic. One, two, three. Keep his head tipped down. Ready? Yep. As soon as we get him in the clinic, I'm going to be putting in an IV catheter, running some fluids. He's small, but he's big enough that we can't really put him on our surgery table, so we're actually going to have him on the floor in the infirmary. OK, good. We're going to have to basically shave his whole flank, clean that off really well, and you know, get busy with surgery. I'm just doing a block so he doesn't feel where I'm going to cut. So just a little bit of a block there, and then I'm going to end up doing my cut right about there. OK, let's scrub them up. As I'm getting ready to do the surgery, I'm definitely feeling like tension in the air, because I'm a little bit nervous about how high risk he is with the anesthesia. He's like borderline emaciated. Okie dokie. But we are definitely at a point where we have no other choice. All right. Now it's time to see if we can go in and pull off a miracle. Cutting. Hoping I find an explanation in here for why he's so skinny and why he's not getting better. So it'd be great news if you saw a big chunk of garbage. Oh, yeah, that would be awesome. OK. So this is his room, and we're going to pull this out. Let's see, it's kind of gassy. His room, in now that I've kind of got it, part of it out, I mean, this is the organ, this big, large, four-chambered stomach that gets bloated. And you can see how large it is. I'm, I'm just holding one small part of it. It's a balloon. That's going to be like a fart. And as soon as I make the first cut, Ooh. it's like, I kind of just directed it over at Maya. <laughs> oh my god, it stinks. Mmm, something's kind of sour there. Dang. Ooh. It smells like death, kind of. It, it does like not smell healthy. Coffee. All of the room and contents are just sort of coming out under pressure. It's a real frothy kind of bloaty material. That isn't quite right. So now, Maya, I need you uh -huh. to hang on to this. But, but let me get some of this out of the way. Volcano. Frothy, frothy bloat. 
I've never seen it like so frothy. It should be more like matte. It's like baking soda and vinegar. Oh yeah, it's like we just dropped a Mentos in a Diet Coke bottle. Hang on a second. We need the edges like out and down a bit. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Whoa. Oh yeah. What is that? I don't know, but it's not normal. Whoa, this is like serious froth. Mm -hmm. As I'm looking in Julius's room in, I was not expecting like stuff to come pouring out. That is definitely not normal. So something is going on here. Can we prop him some more, please? So that gravity is our friend here. We just want to make sure that that's kind of going down and not into his belly. There we go. Uh, God, there's so much, you guys. Wow. Oh, there we go. Whoa. What is that? I don't know, but that wasn't, that seemed weird. There's more. Oh, yeah. This what is, is that? I don't know, but it's not normal. As all this, like, kind of oozy, frothy green material is coming out, I feel something, like, harder and longer as I pull. It's, like, doesn't want to give, and I'm like, OK. Garbage bag? It's, it's garbage. So so this is, a, I think, a garbage bag. It's not normal anyway, whatever it is. It's rocks and stuff that's all wound up. There, that's garbage bag right there. Plastic, see that? So maybe we could have a separate tub for this. This size of a piece of garbage definitely would cause weight loss, and it definitely would interfere with the fermentation going on in its room, and it would just be a total blockage and not give him any nutrition at all. This looks like the goriest I mean, it's brutal. Scene. I know. OK, let's do the big glove so I can really get in there. What I'm doing now is basically just trying to get in there and get all the goo out so that I can find, possibly, any more garbage in there. OK, I'm, like, deep in the room. And... I'm up against his belly. Oh, there's like rocks in here. Holy, what are those rocks? I don't know how he didn't eat that. Or they yeah. could maybe form like hard chunks, you know, around some of the garbage. OK, so there's no other big chunks in there. So we're going to start closing this up. Let's rinse this first. Yeah. Go in the right way. Okie dokie, bud. I gotta cool off a second. Ooh. It's totally so oh, cool. look at that. How does that all fit in the stomach? I'm very happy to get that plastic and that garbage out of the way. It's kind of like the smoking gun. All right, Maya, I'm gonna suture that closed right there. I'm feeling like, okay, I hope this was it. I hope this is all we need to do because I can't find anything else. So at least we've given him another shot. How'd he do? He did fabulous. We're not done yet. I'm just closing the last bit of the skin now. You would not believe the stuff we pulled out of him. Ooh. I'm really glad we did it, because there was definitely a couple things that we're not going to be letting things through. Yeah. OK, buddy. Oh, my god, I can't stand up. <gasps> oh, I can't hardly stand up. Woo. Clean up an aisle one. This morning, Michelle ventures out across the Alaskan frontier to the reindeer farm in Palmer. OK, everybody. Come on, guys. Today, she has over four dozen patients to wrangle in an annual reindeer ride. Push it up. Today is herd processing day, so we're giving full physicals to all the reindeer. Come on. We've got big bulls, lots of females, lots of babies, and it's really hot out. The animals are stressed, so we're going to try and quickly run them all through. They're all complaining a little bit. So we've got our work cut out for us today. Slowly, slowly, slow, 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 slow. The handlers funnel the herd through the gauntlet of gates and chutes to queue up. Close it, close it, close it, close it, close it. Close it. <laughs> OK, we ready for the first one? Then Send. it's go time. Here it comes. All right. This is Michelle's one chance each year to find and treat any ailments that might otherwise go unseen. She's got lumps everywhere. This looks more like infection. So we might hit her with some antibiotic. Oh, no, 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 stay, 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 stay. We need to, you know, check everybody's teeth, have a look at their eyes. Eyes look great. That one looks good. Go. Sin. 
Some might have foot issues. Can we get you to stand up? Oh, good girl. There you go. Needs a vaccine. Vaccinate deworm. Right. Send. We're going to tag all the babies. All tagged up. OK. Oh, oh. Scalpel, please. We'll probably have to express a few abscesses. Yeah. Pimple popping 101 and treat any injuries we find. The antler is broken in here. We're going to have to remove it. OK. Who's coming next? You better grab her, because she's going to flail here in a second. Maya, can you put a set of gloves on, please? So much hair. <laughs> You're a beautiful baby. Today is the first time for the babies to run through the chute. No, 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 no. So they're a little confused. They don't know where to go. So as much as possible, we're going to just carry them from the chute out to the fence. Boing, boing, boing. Back to mommy you go. And the adults are old pros. They'll do anything to avoid getting caught. Oh, let her through. Let her go. They'll try and jump the chute or just rip right through it. It's dangerous work. The flailing reindeer can take out a farmhand from a kick to the gut or an antler in the eye. Okay? Yeah. Bulldog him. Today is herd processing day. And Michelle is 49 reindeer deep in medical mayhem. Four, six, three. Can't let her go. Now there's just one patient left before the threat of broken bones is over for another year. Last one. Oh, fiery. Vaccine. Dewormer. Okay. Is he completo? Completed. Yep. All right. We are done. It's all done. It was a hot day and a long day, but we got through everybody and we made it. <laughs> High fives all around. Nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, man, you earned your paid day. We're ready? We're yeah. ready. The Oakleys are ready for their ride. <laughs> You guys are all in the back, too, like I'm a legitimate chauffeur. You would just kind of tour us around and we could wave at everybody. Oh, God. It's Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do we actually want Sarah to drive? <laughs> so we're coming out of winter here at AWCC, and we're going to go see Caesar today. He's a reindeer male who's having some issues with his antlers. OK, and which one hasn't shed that one, that big one? Caesar. Yep. He's got a big and a small antler by the looks of it. Typically, male reindeer shed their antlers as soon as rut's over. We've castrated all of our reindeer. It causes some imbalances with the hormones, and the old antlers just don't shed. Caesar's issue right now is that he can't let go of his old antlers. Unfortunately, his new antlers start hanging on to the old antlers. And so that's a problem because it can start to cause little cuts and injuries. And then that gets infected. There can be a lot of pus. It can start to grow really weird. So we want to get the old antlers out of the way. Who's this one with the attitude? That's Fern. Oh, Fern. Oh my god, Fern. She's so cute. And she's been a little bottle baby that we pulled out last year. Just about died on us. Oh, reindeer kisses. Is he going to not come over here? Yeah, he's the only one not coming over here. Unfortunately, Caesar's not the friendliest of the reindeer. He's not really on Santa's team, so he doesn't come hang out with us that easily. Dr. Oakley's going to have to sedate him. I think he's coming over now. Are you ready to go? I'm ready. Let's go. OK. Oh, look at that. He knew instantly. Hi, Fern. Oh, chase him no, further, you stinker. One of the females went after him. They're chasing him away, which is annoying. In the reindeer herd, we have a couple of ladies that are kind of bullies. Um, you know, I feel like every herd kind of has their own batch of mean girls, and the reindeer herd certainly has theirs. Don't chase him. Seriously. All right. 
Well, it hit him nicely. It injected. The girls in general are just not nice. Oh. Oh, there he goes. He's down. If they start getting rough with him, do you want me and Brittany to run in there? Oh, she's getting, no, she's getting rough with him, Sarah. She's going to poke his eye if she keeps doing that. Oh, yep, yep, yep. I don't think he might pop up, so let's just be real careful going around behind him. No, don't you bug him. Oh, that was perfect. Let's see what we're looking at here. Ooh. Is it really gross? Ooh, what is that? Caesar's a mess. That new antler is like black and bubbly. It's like something coming out of the swamp. It's causing like abscesses and stuff. So, you see there's an abscess there. Do you yeah. see that? Ooh, look at it. Puss. It's got pus on it. It's got a bunch of weird bubbles. It's not good. And it actually could be dangerous for him if it can cause infections that can go deeper. And because this antler tissue is infected and inflamed right now, it hurts, and he doesn't want to bump into anybody. And the females in the pen know that. They're already picking on him. They're pushing him away from food. They're giving him a little bit of a hard time because they know he's not wanting to use those antlers anymore. Yeah, hoping we could kind of loosen it, but I don't know. What really bums me out is there's no kind of wobbling, almost like a loose tooth that I think I can get. It, it, it's not budging. It is still in there. And it's hanging on so tight. So we'll probably just have to cut it. Can I get some giggly wire? Giggly wire is basically just a saw that's wire. You can see it's got a bunch of little sharp knives that make up the wire. You're doing great. Good job. You're so good at this, Dr. Rowe. Yeah, you're still getting a turn. Nice try. That dead antler is basically just condensed bone, but there's no feeling to it, so it doesn't hurt. But if you were to do it too fast, it can create a lot of heat. That's a lot of friction. As you're going, that heat could travel down and, and damage any of the live tissue. Oh, this is great for the abs. Yep. It's a pretty intense job. It's kind of like being at the dentist's office when they're grinding on your teeth. It smells like that. And it's kind of a pain in the butt because you're all hunched over. Yeah, girl. Yes! It really does wonders for your back, I promise. Don't start a fire. Maybe slow down, actually, yeah, seriously. Stop. Sarah's got the elbow grease going. She's like flying. I didn't want to get overheat. Like, don't set a fire, Sarah. Come on. <laughs> oh, you almost got it through, dude. That's not smoke, that's powder, but it does get really hot, as you know. Oh, wow! Ah! <laughs> so, so there's a little bleeder there, but it's already kind of stopping on its own. That little bit of bleeding looks shocking, but it's not as bad as it looks. It's just that I have to cut through a little bit of that fresh velvet, and that stuff bleeds like stink. I mean, there's no getting around it. There's going to be a bit of gore. There's going to be a lot of bleeding with this. I might try to take this front chunk off, too. All right, so now, Maya, let's get you over here with that white jacket. I don't want to be anywhere near the front of the animal for once. The blood is like squirting out. There's pus draining because I've got a fairly new white coat. Maya is definitely willing to get down and dirty, but she also will choose fashion over practicality when she's choosing her work clothes. Yes. OK. Thank you. Yeah. Good job. This is the fruits of our efforts. There you go, bud. Oh, cough and a big stretch. Good boy. <laughs> Look at the fat butt cheeks on him. He's like, where'd my, where'd my helmet go? Why does he look lopsided? <laughs> oh, 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 love. You're going to grow them. They're growing right now. It's real. Oh, here comes the girls. They're like, let's oh, check this out. They're going to make so much they're fun of him. Into it. He'll be back on good terms with his girls soon enough. When any of the males lose their antlers, even naturally, the, the girls will chase them around a bit and bully him because he's been chasing them around for a while, and now it's their turn. <laughs> Let's go. Can't wait to drive the Oakleys. It's my number one job. Let's go, chauffeur. <laughs> Faster. 
It's follow-up day at the reindeer farm in Palmer. Okay. Michelle's here to see if there's good news for Denise, or if more serious intervention is in order for Buster and Walt. Let's look at Buster next. Buster has been struggling to beat a life-threatening infection for months. I've been watching Buster, and he looks great, looking pretty feisty. Buster. Buster's spunky attitude may be a sign he's feeling better, but Michelle won't know for sure until she can inspect his belly up close. Okay, go ahead and send him. Here he comes. The only way to safely perform an exam on the revved up bull is to trap him in the squeeze. Whoa, Buster. Whoa, whoa. So you can see the drain where it went in. I'm gonna cut the suture there and then pull it right through. And that one, no, stop, stop, stop. Don't kick me. Now that the drains are out of the way, Michelle can give Buster a definitive prognosis. That feels a lot better, Denise. Yeah, still a little bit of swelling, but that hard stuff, that hard swelling is gone. Great. Oh, okay. It's hard to believe this is the same guy. I mean, the swelling's almost gone. There's hardly any drainage. He's doing awesome. He's good, let him go. Release. Awesome, he's running good. He looks fantastic. He definitely nice. is not going to be breeding this fall, but the herd is where the home is, and so he's right with his home. <laughs> they did their job. Did you see? Across the pen, Good boy. Walt awaits his doctor's orders. Woo! The one-year-old bull was hand-picked by Denise to become the next breeder in the herd, until a mysterious infection put his future in jeopardy. He had a kind of a bluish film over his eye from an injury to the cornea. What I hope to see when I look at Walt's eye today is that kind of blue film is resolving and there's no additional swelling or redness around the eye. Okay, Walt, watch I don't lose my eye looking at yours. Let me have a look here in the shade. Let's see. Sierra, come here. I need you to open the eyelid for me while I'm doing this. You're gonna probably need two hands. There you go. There we go. Keep holding that there. The opacity is decreased about 50%. Oh, that looks so much better. That is healing up nicely. It looks much better. It's resolving quite a bit. Anterior chamber is clear. Even the redness, like the really angry vessels that were kind of coming in on the top of his cornea, those have gone away quite a bit. Yeah, let's put a little genomycin in. I don't think we need any more penicillin. A dab of antibiotic ointment will help kill any residual bacteria in the reindeer's eye. It looks so much better. Yeah. Walt's baby blue should be back to brown in another week's time. Yay! All right, Walt. I'm so happy to have him doing well. Three, two, one, go. See you later, Walt. I saw a difference within 24 hours of Dr. Oakley treating that eye. Can you believe the difference to that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can. Eyes heal really quickly with a little bit of help. So, yeah. Yeah. They kind of have to. We're really excited to be able to have him be the breed bull this fall and uh, the daddy to the babies in the herd. <laughs> but before Michelle says goodbye, there's one last subject to run the reindeer gauntlet. Okay. I want to see if they can catch me with that. OK, go for it. Mid-air, go for the Superman. Ready, Pat? Superman, catch. You'll never catch me, I'm just telling you. <laughs> to really know how to outwit these guys, I should experience the shoot myself. <laughs> All right, fine. I'm caught. Ear tag me. I guess I'll stick to my day job.